Hey, 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 it's Adele from Let's Get Inky, and today I'm getting very painty in my Dina Wakely media journal. So there's all different types of paper, but today I've chosen the white paper uh, because I want to do a ombre sunrise type background. And the reason why I'm getting a bit of a bonus video, usually I only post over here on Fridays, but today is Wednesday currently in Australia. It's probably Tuesday if you're watching this when it uh, goes live. But today is Anzac Day in Australia and it's a special day in my heart. And so I thought I would do a little uh, special journal page to remember Anzac Day. So a little bit about Anzac Day if you're not Australian, uh, it's a day where we remember soldiers and um, other people that have served in military operations for Australia and New Zealand. So Anzac stands for Australian and New Zealand Army Corps and it's obviously celebrated in both of our countries. And I just today, if you're one of my Inky Quill Patreon people, uh, there's a video going up today where I did a layout where I marched with my grandfather who has since passed away. Uh, I marched in the Anzac Day Parade in Sydney and it was amazing and it was such a, a fun memory to have. That was back in 1998. I was just a wee little lass and I wore some of his medals uh, which I still have today and so that's a little extra video over there too. So now I'm doing this, I'm doing a painting and I was quite, I was quite stoked at the background. Usually I don't paint like this, I guess you could say. I usually paint where I only do like blocks of color. I don't really blend them together, but I'm just using, using, using the dilutions paints and they blended really nicely. The white really helped out to blend the colors together as well. I'm using a stencil from Darkroom Door and just a makeup sponge and some black dilutions paint. And I wanted to, wanted to represent the poppy. Now the, the flower, poppy, the poppy, is uh, important for Anzac Day and a lot of people wear them on their buttonhole when the um, usually when the males march in Sydney they put them in their buttonholes and the, the ladies might pin one onto their shirt or dress and it's an important whenever I see poppies I, I think of Anzac Day so I wanted to try and include them and of course I don't have a giant variety of florals, which surprises me in stamps. I really only have two floral stamp sets and in stencils, I only have maybe three or so. And I thought these ones looked the most poppy like. Um, and when we do art journaling, I think that it's important to work with what we've got and not try to you know try to stop the process of actually making because we feel like we don't have the exact perfect thing that would go on this perfect page so i'm using these um these flowers i don't know what type of flowers they are they do look very poppy like i'm not sure what they are though and they're an old, uh, older prima one that i have that you you would have seen lots of times this stamp set gets a lot of use i first stamped them just on some thin uh, printer cardstock and the watercolor mm -mm, did not work. So instead I stamped them onto some uh, proper watercolor paper and I had to buy this watercolor paper. It's called Archers. Um, and of course we have little baby Archer who's not a baby anymore, guys. He's a, he's, is he officially a toddler now that he's turned one? That's slightly terrifying. Uh, but I'm just adding a little bit of my Winsor & Newton watercolors to these and I'm not going, I'm not going too real, too realistic, but I'm trying to perhaps shade a little bit so you can see with, especially with that center flower that I've kind of made one side a little bit more watery and the way that I do that is I just load up more water on my paintbrush when I do that side or I start with the darker side first and then we'll move across to the side that I want to be lighter because of course as you're painting your paint starts to run out and so the the last bit that you do will have the lightest amount of paint so there's a bit of a tip I'm no watercolor expert I 
I just use them to have a bit of a play around with. And so I, I'm really interested in actually doing some watercolour classes. My friend found one that was down in Sydney that we were going to do together, but I'm away on that weekend. So I'm, I'm hopefully, any if there's any Central Coast peeps watching, there might be a handful of you. Uh, if you know any watercolour classes local, let me know. Let me know in the comments. So I did dry my poppies and then did another coat of paint and I seem to have gone somewhere. Where, oh where have I gone? I think I may have gone to get clean water. That's what it was. So now I'm just filling in the center with kind of a, a gray to start off with because with watercolors always start with the lighter tones so that you can build up the color because it's much easier to make something darker that just goes with any paint really any sort of mixed media that you're doing start with the lightest color because you might find that the darkest color is too dark and it's very hard to uh, remove it so now I'm using my giant scissors to cut these out and you might be cringing at the size of the scissors and the size of the thing that I'm fussy cutting but the the trick that I have to fussy cutting with giant scissors is to not move the scissors because it's so much easier to just move the flower. Now this is sped up two times so I don't cut this fast but I do cut pretty pretty fast and I purposely didn't go into every single little space because I knew I wanted to outline these flowers and kind of make them stand out a little bit so that they didn't blend into the background and also so that they coordinate with the uh, black silhouettes of the flowers in the background. So I'm trying to figure out where I want to put them. Do I want to put them on that side and then right on the right hand side? But in the end I decided to go for the right hand side and I'm really happy with where I where I put it. I think it's a it's a good spot to have it um, and it I like to have the focus more so on one side so I think by filling up that whole right side with the stems and with the flowers it, it made it more of an impact. It would have blended in too much um, to the other one. Just using some scotch tacky glue to glue those down. I'm almost out of that. I need to get some more. It's my fave glue. Let me know in the comments what your favorite wet glue is because I, I've tried a couple and I just, I'm, I'm in the market for a new bottle of glue and I wouldn't mind trying a, a new one. I, all I need is something that preferably dries quickly and dries clear and isn't glossy when it dries, like glossy accents. I love glossy accents, but it's not good for just for me personally because I'm so uh, heavy handed with my adhesive uh, it doesn't work for me to glue down embellishments and things like this. So at first I was going to watercolour the stems on and then I didn't like how opaque it looked compared to all of the silhouettes so I decided to wipe that off and you can still see it but that's okay because I'm about to go straight over the top with a paint pen. Paint pens are so fun if you are interested in uh, even just writing in your art journal or you're looking for art supplies that try something new pick up an art uh, pick up a paint pen these Posca ones are the ones I usually get just because they're easiest to get and they're a little bit cheaper than the Liquitex ones Liquitex ones are quite pricey over here I have a feeling Aaron got me well the one that Aaron got me for was either Valentine's Day or my birthday I think it costs $20, which is ridiculous for one single pen. Uh, it's a beautiful pen though, it's very nice, but if you're just going to play around, definitely the, the Poscas are a, a reasonable price point. And I'm just going around and I very, I was a bit naughty and the glue wasn't quite dry. So I did pause it just before, I don't know if you, know, if you saw the break there, but I did pause it and dry it because if you're using paint pens you definitely need everything to be dry because otherwise uh, it's not going to work and it's going to kill your pen quick smart so i i have no idea what uh, poppy leaves look like i i could have looked it up but i think i made this during one of archie's naps and i was on a time crunch so i know what they're meant to be and 
uh, if you read the words that go along with it and you're an Aussie that's familiar or a New Zealander, I say Aussie, I mean New Zealanders too, I'm not leaving you out, don't worry, uh, then you'll know what they're meant to be and I'm sure there's not too many poppy leaf experts uh, watching this video, I hope not anyway. So I wanted to write out the ode, which is a special thing that we say on Anzac Day. And um, I think it was part of a poem that was written around the time of World War One. I, I want to say. I'm not, not certain on that, but I'm just guessing. And so I do decide to write that down. I decided that the poppies needed a bit of a pop. They, they weren't popping. My poppies weren't popping. And so I got my Uniball Signo Broad and I'm really roughly just doodling around. And honestly, this is my favorite part of the whole page. I, I think that it just made it and it just, adding white to an art journal page can really brighten everything up. Even if it's just a tiny outline, you haven't, put a giant patch of white paint somewhere it's just a really tiny little t detail but boy it can really lift a page from and just kind of bring it to life a little bit not really but you, you know what I mean I really like the Uniball Signo Broad it's a, a great pen to use um, I was going to go around these flowers as well and I didn't like it so I rubbed it out as quick as I could and then just got my Posca paint pen and just kind of colored in the smudgy white bits because you know my motto you can always cover it up and that I did so now I'm using my food ball in 1.5 size and I'm just uh, quickly writing out the this part of the ode and I really enjoy writing on acrylic paint I know that sounds funny but it's a beautiful texture it's very different to writing just on a, a normal piece of cardboard or cardstock so I challenge you in your next art journal page if you've never tried it before I know lots of people do already um, do this to their pages but try and be brave and write on your background right on top of some paint and if it doesn't work you've always got black paint black paint can be your best friend it can cover up all sorts of things uh, and it's just yeah it, I just really like the the look of having the writing all across the background um, it's just a, a nice little a nice little page I think uh, so now after this oh I really liked the look of the white on the poppies but I kind of felt like it needed some more white because I always say hits of three so you got to have three three little punches of something for um, for it to really stand out and pop and look cohesive and you've got the the white of the poppy outlines you've got the white at the top of the background the white paint and I felt like it needed it needed something else so I grabbed my uh, chalk pen which if you're new to my channel I used to use them for doing custom blackboards and so that the tips are, are dead they're all fuzzy and gray and horrible but they're still paint left in them so I like to use them as a bit of splattering and adding the splattering just kind of tied in the foreground the poppies with the background of the paint and it just made it all work together so I hope wherever you are if you're in Australia or New Zealand if you've had family or friends that have served um, for our military I'm thinking of you thinking of your families today let me know if you've ever been in the Anzac Day March or a march that's uh, nearby to your where you're located and I hope you have a very safe public holiday Aussies and New Zealanders and I'll see you next time bye